Welcome to this episode of Revelations from Heaven. My guest today, Renee Schaefer, was involved at a very early age in Satanism and a cult. She actually channeled spirits, and she, with her Satanic uh, members, prayed against Christians. Something interesting happened as they were praying because Mm -hmm. something happened where they could not effect Uh, believers in Jesus Christ. But what happened is that later on in her life, she joined the Marine Corps to get away from all of that. She underwent surgery. And then during surgery, she encountered Jesus Christ. Jesus Mm -hmm. gave her a choice. We'll learn about that. Today, she is a minister. She teaches young people and uh, in a church and we'll learn this amazing, incredible story. Renee, it's great to have you with us today. <laughs> Thank you, Randy. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. Well, Renee, uh, at the at the age of eight, my goodness, yes. <laughs> you got involved in Satanism. How does one become involved that early into this uh, into this dark underworld? Uh, well, actually, um, I didn't know it at the time but God has blessed me with spiritual sight. And so I always saw demons all around me, shadows, whatever. So that got me curious, and I started to talk to them. And they started to teach me magic, things I shouldn't know. (laughs) Um, And I started practicing magic seriously uh, at the age of eight. And then I wanted to do more research. I was very curious about all of everything they could teach me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and went on the internet, read Anton LaVey's stuff, Lester Crowley's stuff, and found an online coven. And they got me in touch with a local coven of Satanists. Um, and at that time, I was 13. And the high priest initiated me into the cult with a blood sacrifice. So that's how that started. (laughs) A blood sacrifice. Now, how was your uh, upbringing, your family and all of that? uh, Was there an opening there or something? uh, Well, (laughs) it was pretty tumultuous. Um, My dad worked all the time, but um, it was... I would say it was fairly normal, um, but there were neighbors that were not good influences, and Mm. uh, there was abuse going on, so. Yeah, there's usually, it seems to be an opening whereby the enemy kind of has his way, and uh, so especially at a young age, at eight, Mm -hmm. and then subsequently getting involved in 13, blood sacrifices uh, <laughs> and the like my goodness i know mm. you're chuckling about it now but at that time yeah. it was very <laughs> yeah. serious because because yes. you were actually involved in this in this cult mm-hmm. in attacking christians weren't you yes um so we so i was a channeler um i talked to the demons and we re- they relayed messages to the rest of the cult through me and Their goal was really just to cause chaos. Um, But later on, um, I was 16 when, uh, I'm just going to say it, uh, I met Satan himself, Mm -hmm. uh, which really obviously is shocking. Um, (laughs) And his priority for us, it changed the trajectory of the cult, and we started attacking just Christians, going after clergy specifically. Um, We had names, addresses, workplaces, um, and that's what we did. We just harassed Christians. Mm. So That's (laughs) going on now, isn't it? I mean, that's... Oh, yeah. Yeah. There are assignments on uh, people who are actively engaged in in worshiping and ministering 
uh, mm-hmm. including now yourself. So we pray, we plead the blood of Jesus yes. Christ over you. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> that the Lord has victory because you realized uh, as this was going on that there were certain Christians or certain people mm-hmm. that would not be at the effect of of these uh, these prayer or these chants or these uh, right. you know, these practices. Yep. So uh, I would actually travel in the spirit, astral projection, to um, influence, I don't know, lust or something on a Christian. And uh, in the spirit, I would see like a dome, like a blue dome over uh, groups of Christians that were praying or... uh, just through the, all those experiences, I connected that we could not attack Christians as they were actively praying protection from God. Like, there was a no-go zone. Just no, absolutely no power. So, <laughs> that's, I love it now. Like, like yes! <laughs> Thank you, God. Um, but back then, it, it made me very angry. It made the demons very angry. Um... And so, at that point, that made me curious, how is this possible? How can Christians have this power to just nullify the demonics completely? So, uh... (laughs) uh, Well, it's it's the Lord's Prayer, isn't it? Um, Mm -hmm. That will be done. And, uh, lead me not unto temptation, but deliver me from evil. Mm -hmm. I mean, that Jesus Mm -hmm. gave that prayer. And you're you're testifying that in fact, when we do that, pray the uh, uh, the enemy, God's enemy, the minions of demons and what have you, cannot affect us. Yeah, yeah, it's it's perfect protection. Nothing can get through. So uh, I take very great comfort in that now. <laughs> and um, yes. Satan is defeated. Yeah, he doesn't have any power. It's all an illusion, and uh, I wish more people grasped that. <laughs> yes. Um, well, there was a point in which you now you're involved in all of this in a very heavy way. I mean, by mm-hmm. the way, to have Satan appear to you, he he had uh, an assignment for you that was very special. If you mm-hmm. know, Satan is not omnipresent. No, he, he he's not all knowing as God is. So no. <laughs> if he appears at one person one time in all of the uh, millions that are around the globe, mm-hmm. he obviously uh, wanted a heavy assignment on you, but you did not at some point. You came to that decision that this is not the life that you wanted. No, uh, it was very, well, it was obviously very dark, but it was also very hectic and chaotic. And... um my younger brother was saved. I didn't know this at the time. And the demons wanted me to attack him. I was like, no, that's my family. That's off limits. Um, so uh, they knew I was having doubts about everything. And they were trying to get in where they could. Attack my family. Um, put doubts in my head. That kind of thing. But... Um, I wanted the truth. I started reading the Bible. And uh, I actually asked Satan at one point (laughs) uh, if Jesus was real. Because I believed in Father God, but not Jesus. And uh, he got very angry. (laughs) And he told me, yes, he was. Which flabbergasted me. Like, Why would he say that? And... Mm -hmm. Um, then he mocked me <laughs> mm-hmm. and told me I didn't even know who my enemy was. <laughs> mm. uh, so I was like, okay, something's not adding up. I need to figure out what the truth is. Um, wow. And at that point, um, the demons attacked me and tried to forcefully possess me. And there was a you know a fight that went on. And at the end of that, uh, I called up to Jesus to save me, to uh, get rid of all the demons. And he did, (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, 
which was incredible. I was like, why would he do that for me? Like, I don't even know who he is, but he did it to prove that he was real and powerful mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. He's so gracious, isn't he? he I mean, you? he just, <laughs> yes. You know, the, the, the fact that Jesus was just waiting for that invitation uh, from you and that Satan uh, realized that, that Jesus is the enemy, obviously, you know, they're in opposition, mm -hmm. but just he knows that Satan also realizes and all the demons realize the power, not only of Jesus yeah. Christ, but the name calling out the name of Jesus. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it seemed like uh, there was a turning point where uh, Satan and, and the demons were calling on you to attack your brother. And you said, well, that's enough. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to do that against my, my brother uh, yeah. who you love. Um, so, so you needed to escape. But you yes. weren't in this place, and you had to go someplace to escape uh, all of these effects. Right. Uh, I didn't understand at the time that God can protect you anywhere you are. So I thought that I needed to run away um, mm -hmm. from angry witches, from demons, whatever. So I'm like, I'm going to join the Marine Corps <laughs> mm -hmm. and run away. Uh, so I did. And... In boot camp uh, was where I got saved. Um, it was Pentecostal service, very loud, very crazy music, <laughs> dancing, mm -hmm. everything. Like, this is very different from where I've come from. <laughs> <laughs> the worship was amazing. Um, and I wanted to be part of that, part of that just loving worship to God. I'm like, why do these people love love this God? I didn't get it. Um but the preacher was talking about how uh, Jesus was alive, that he was a living God, that he wasn't just a spirit or he wasn't just a man or a good teacher, um, that he was alive and powerful. And uh, I actually, it was Luke chapter 24, and I heard an angel speak along with the preacher and said, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Mm -hmm. And that hit me so hard. <laughs> uh, and God was telling me that I couldn't worship, worship him like I worshipped Satan, that it wasn't the same thing. <laughs> it didn't mm -hmm. work like that. Uh, my God. <laughs> um, and he was calling me to love on him and love on his people. So uh, that's when I asked him to be my savior and wow. Lord. Wow. Total transformation at that point. I think it's worthy mm -hmm. to note that you were very spiritually sensitive, obviously. Um, some people are more inclined for mm -hmm. whatever reason, others are resistant to spiritual influences. They say, yeah. you know, the spirits don't exist or whatever, but they do. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, yes. Spirits <laughs> exist in our, in wherever we live, in our domain, community, what have you. Uh, we don't live in a mm -hmm. spiritual vacuum, but but no. you had, <laughs> at an early age acknowledged that fact that mm -hmm. uh, we live not in a uh, physical world as much as we live in a spiritual world. Oh yeah, it's for me now. The spiritual is must much more real than the physical. It's you know you you've been to heaven. It is much more real <laughs> than this yes. world is. Um, yes, yes, that's a reality that uh, those of us who have had these encounters testify that heaven and the spiritual realm is more real than this world. That's kind of ha mm -hmm. hard to get your head around because, <laughs> you know, you think, how can I can see, I can touch, I, you know, yeah. all, all of my five senses, I can realize this world. But what we don't understand in the spiritual realm, there are multiple senses beyond the five mm -hmm. senses. And mm -hmm. also the reality is not defined by what we see, but what actually exists. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, they're also on your on your journey. Now you're a believer, but there's going to be a point in which you are brought uh, in a, to a face-to-face encounter with Jesus Christ himself. Right. So um, even after I was saved, uh, the Marine Corps isn't conducive to very holy living. <laughs> I'll just say that. <laughs> so um, I wasn't really living as a Christian should. Um, I was with my now ex-husband. I was pregnant with, uh, it was my fifth pregnancy. And uh, I started to miscarry. So I went to the hospital. I lost a lot of blood. Too much. And um, I was in the hospital for a couple days before they did surgery. Um, They didn't let me eat before the surgery for several days. So I was very weak. I had lost a lot of blood. And so they take me into the surgery room. They're doing whatever they're doing. I wake up in the middle of the surgery. And I can sense as a mother, I know my baby's not in me anymore. And I try to get up to look. And I hear the surgeon or a doctor tell me to lay still. And he orders more anesthesia. And after they give me more anesthesia, um, that's when I die. And it was odd. (laughs) Um, I saw, like, the back of my eyelids, and then I saw the top half of the operating room. And I heard a voice, I don't know if it was an angel or God, say, don't look. So I'm like, okay, and I look up, (laughs) Mm. and everything goes black, pitch black. And I had this sensation of moving very quickly upwards. And then um, I stop, and everything is very still and very quiet. And God sort of opens my eyes, and there's this fiery cloud all around me. And... It's all sorts of different colors. Um, just this beautiful glowing, I don't, it's not a mist. I don't, <laughs> it's hard to describe. Uh, oh, there's my cat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I become aware that I'm sitting and I'm sitting on a park bench. And then I become aware that there's someone sitting next to me on my right. So I turn and look, and it's my previously deceased aunt. And she, we talk for a little bit, um, just about anything, what I was doing before, you know, just life, just not nonsense, but trivial things. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I'll never forget this, because she turns her head really fast, like someone called her, and I know now that the Lord called her, and she disappears. And then before I fully register, she's gone. <laughs> the Lord Jesus is sitting exactly where she was, mm-hmm. just right next to me on the bench. But I panic. <laughs> um, I Because I looked at him, I looked into his eyes, And I knew that he knew all of the horrible things I had done. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I I didn't want him near me. Uh, I had the urge to actually claw at his face. Uh, Which was mortifying afterwards. (laughs) But at the time, I just was so scared of Mm -hmm. judgment, of his wrath. Mm -hmm. Um... And he didn't do anything. He just sat there and waited. (laughs) Hmm. And he just emanated peace. And eventually, (laughs) I calmed down enough to realize that he wasn't trying to hurt me. I need another tissue, excuse me. And that should be a pre-qualification for all of these interviews. You have to have some (laughs) tissue nearby. Uh, uh, 
I've got mine, by the way. <laughs> so please. Mm. So, you, so you're at the point now where you're you're before the Lord himself. He's the right there, and you're expecting yes. judgment for all that you had done, the mm -hmm. satanic cult, uh, casting spells against Christians, all of these things. Even though mm -hmm. you're, you're saved, you're born anew at this point, it's still you're expecting to be judged harshly. Yes, yes. Um, and I just kind of waited for the hammer to drop, like for him to send me away. Um, but that didn't happen. Uh, what he actually did, what confused me for a split second, he grasped, he was wearing robes, soft, like cream colored robes, and he pulled them apart. And it wasn't his chest there. It was a portal with all of creation inside. And I was mesmerized by that sight. <laughs> mm. And I completely forgot my fear. And I, I was leaning forward to look <laughs> inside the portal because it was just beautiful and complex. Um, and he was just communicating that I am God. Basically, mm. it's just all he was communicating to me. Mm. Um, but it didn't fully click yet. <laughs> it didn't, that part didn't click. And after he did that, he told me to look again and he pulled the earth uh, before us and had me watch it and have had all the everything going on in real time. We watched it. And he showed me how life was complex and he placed everything on purpose for his purposes, uh, that life was very precious to him. And well, that f made me feel worse because <laughs> mm -hmm. I had not cherished life. I knew I had failed. Um, and it was silent. There was no noise and we sat in silence and i'm looking at the earth not wanting to look at him <laughs> mm -hmm. and he eventually tells me to look at him i very slowly obey uh and i look into his eyes And he wasn't condemning me. Um, he was just... He was stern, but he wasn't angry. And he was just merciful, I don't... <laughs> It was only love and power in his eyes. That was it. <sighs> now Sorry. you've got me going, so. Because I've, I've looked into those eyes. I know what you're talking yes. about. Yes. They're Please continue. clear. And <laughs> the clearest eyes I've ever seen. Um... Gosh, what happened after that? <laughs> it's almost as though nothing else matters, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. When you look into those <laughs> eyes. Yes. Hmm. And everything else kind of evaporates beyond that. But mm -hmm. at this point, things have kind of shifted for you because you were expecting to be judged, go before the judgment mm -hmm. seat and then rendering the judgment and found guilty. But right. that wasn't going to be the case for you, was it? Right. Um, so when I saw my aunt, actually, I expected her to sort of guide me through heaven. I don't know. Being dead is strange. <laughs> I didn't know what mm. to expect. Uh, and at that point, um, I just figured God would send me wherever he was sending me away in heaven to rest. Um, and 
So he surprised me with a choice to come back or go. And he told me, um, oh, well, first he explained uh, a little bit about how free will fits into his overarching plan. That I could choose either, that it was all right if I chose either, that he wasn't going to be angry either way. Um, he really emphasized that I had the free choice. And... Uh, <laughs> so, I obviously I chose to come back, um, and I asked him what I would be doing. Like, what did he want me to do? Because he said that he would he was sending me back to continue my mission. And I was like, okay, what's my mission? <laughs> uh, but he didn't tell me. Uh, he told me I would, that he would tell me at the time, the appropriate time to do what it was that he called me to do and to carry what he had set out for me to carry. So, <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> At the time, I was not thrilled with that answer. <laughs> um, but he was, he was just so gentle about it. Um, that was just completely, no pressure, but very stern and unmoving at the same time um so uh he sent me back and i asked him <laughs> uh i asked him if i could have as much time to do good as i had done evil so uh he wanted me to really affirm uh, in my heart to go back, not just make a, a head decision, but really want to go back. Um, so he sent me back and I, I woke up in the operating or not the operating room, sorry, the ward. And I had an oxygen mask on. So, uh, I took that off and I freaked out cause I couldn't breathe. <laughs> mm. So at some point I had stopped breathing which I know I died, but mm -hmm. um, I put it back on and I hear this voice from across the ward say, don't worry, God has great things for you. And so what I didn't tell you actually is before this, the year previous, I had attempted suicide. Mm. And I had been in uh, Balboa Hospital. And I had heard that same voice say in that exact tone and cadence, that phrase. So I tried to get up and look at the person <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because now I, I believe that that was an angel um, mm -hmm. reassuring me uh, because I heard that voice in the hospital before. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, Don. Mm. I'm glad you interjected what it was prior to the experience because mm. just the, um, it seemed that Jesus had really allayed all of the guilt, all of the, mm -hmm. all of the, you know, misgivings and about what you had done prior. And it kind of, kind of like he cleansed you of that and assured yes. you that, that your slate had been wiped clean. Yeah, he, um, I didn't really understand, uh, I'm going to start crying again. <laughs> mm. I didn't understand at all what it was to be a Christian. Um, but Jesus really sort of hammered it home that all he wanted was a relationship. That's all he wants. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, we're his children quite literally, uh, and that's what he wants. He just wants us to love him back. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I like to say that he wants to save us more than we want 
to save ourselves. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Unfortunately, sometimes. <sighs> yes. Well, that you know, that's absolutely incredible because it there were you were on the road now post your what we call uh, generally mm -hmm. an afterlife experience with Jesus mm -hmm. in heaven, and now now you're a different person. You met the mm -hmm. King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, face to face. Now, I, I just draw attention, if I may, to the diametrical opposition between having met Satan himself <laughs> and yeah. meeting Jesus. How <laughs> how diametrically opposed, how, how oh. polar opposite can you get than those two? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was the... So, mm, mm. Satan loves to try to puff himself up and bluster his way into i'm so powerful man 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 jesus doesn't need to do any of that he just is <laughs> he just is <laughs> yeah he could uh with his might he could squish all of them and he will mm -hmm. in time yes. that will happen uh but his power is so much greater and I just, I wonder at how these, and now we have to keep in mind that angels have been around since the ancients mm -hmm. for thousands of years. So their understanding of, of uh, things are greater than ours. We've just been yeah. living however long in our lives, right? But they've been living thousands of years. So we know that they know a great deal. They know how to get to us. They know how to you know, make us feel bad and all of those things. Mm. But God created the angels. Right. The angels are created <laughs> beings. They're not, yes. uh, they're not uh, from the beginning of time uh, mm -hmm. or before time uh, as God mm. is. So now you're on this new path and mm -hmm. you uh, obviously you survived the surgery uh, after yes. flatlining and tell us what what happened subsequent to that the angel had prayed for you and or assured you at that point in the mm -hmm. or suite so then what happened uh i was so i believe that the hospital was extremely negligent um i was discharged the same day that i woke up oh my and <laughs> so uh, I went home and I had a pretty long recovery. Uh, but um, just one detail. Uh, God told me to eat, to make sure I ate very well <laughs> when I got oh. home. <laughs> uh -huh. was, and uh, there was the maid in the Bible that he told, he ordered the same thing. He ordered for her to eat, which mm -hmm. I found that yes. very funny years later when I read that. Um, but uh, I was going through a divorce. Um, husband left. I was getting out of the Marine Corps. I didn't have a job. And so because my husband didn't pay or my husband paid rent. So I was also homeless. <laughs> so mm. uh, I decided that I would traveled the country, uh, moved up to Montana, and uh, got baptized and really started to study the Bible and follow God the best I could. Um, and he, I knew that was a uh, just a stopover, that he was calling me back east. Um, and he sent me back east in 2020 and I found a wonderful church here and really started to try to pour myself completely into ministry and just serving God any way I can. So. <laughs> mm. And you're, um, you're ministering to youth as well? Yep. I teach uh, the littlest, littlest class three to five. So that's very fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I haven't. An online blog. Um, I've written a book. God's told me He has another book for me. So tell us about that. <laughs> where we can find you in that uh, in the book? 
Uh, yeah, I have it. It's on Amazon. Um, mm-hmm. It's called Look What the Lord Has Done. Mm-hmm. And we'll, we'll have the link of that to that book as okay. well in the body of this message. Uh, it's the first two chapters are my my journey, what I just told you. And then the mm-hmm. rest of the book is my journey at the last five years or so. Um, mm-hmm. God giving me dreams and visions, uh, healing me. He's healed my back. He's healed me of nerve damage, uh, my feminine problems that caused the miscarriage he healed me of. Uh, he's just been so good. <laughs> mm. And where can we find your blog? Uh, I'm on Quora, mm-hmm. and my name on Quora is Ray, R-A-Y-S. Okay. So Ray S on Quora. And, well, mm-hmm. oh, sorry. Uh, that's more geared towards the people that have come from occult backgrounds. And I want them to know that it's safe to trust God. Um, and there's no judgment from me from whatever they've done. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. it's important. It's important. There are more people mm-hmm. than we know, I think, realize oftentimes who are involved in this, either wittingly or unwittingly. You know, right. there are people who are unwillingly or at the effect of the powers, principality, spirits of darkness. Um, mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we, God made us to accept him. The angels, mm-hmm. when they were made by God, were only made, they could only reject him. Um, so he wants us to, to willfully accept him, doesn't he? Yes. Mm-hmm. He won't. He won't impede our will. So no, no, you've got to cry out. You've got to call out and ask for him. My, and my, as a ag- former agnostic, uh, mm-hmm. I was um, Renee. I was. Um, <laughs> I, I got Christians off of uh, campuses. I, I uh, mm-hmm. tried to disprove them at uh, Christianity at a major university. Yeah, and. Um, and I realized that uh, when you seek the truth, as I mm-hmm. said, God, I didn't. I need to. You need to show up, and mm-hmm. I can't accept. Uh, you know the Bible that there has to be an earnest uh, call out to God uh, yeah. and and to find Him. It's just not just a flippant. You know, God, you either right. show up. You really have to have an earnestness in asking Him to appear or to. Mm-hmm reveal himself to us yeah it's uh it's very important to have that objective seeking for the real truth what the truth is um and i don't i don't think that if you're truly seeking the truth god will be there yes he will meet you there well jesus said him itself has said that himself in John uh, chapter 8, verse 32, and you shall mm. know the truth, he said, and the truth shall set you free. So many people, mm. they're seeking after something which is not an earnest effort to seek after the truth. They're just seeking after what they believe is true. But it right. has to keep an open mind, you know, whether you're of a different religion or whether you're, you know, in a cult or whatever it is, you really can't settle for anything but the absolute truth. Yep. He is the way and the truth. Yes. Now we're starting to preach, but we're getting to uh, <laughs> part of my favorite parts where, I, uh, where I'm going to uh, hand this over to you, Renee, so that you can pray for our audience. But before mm-hmm. we do that, I ask for our audience to join me in prayer uh, as I pray for Renee and as I ask you to join me in prayer for Renee. And that is that we pray for a full release of the, of the power, the authority, the leading, and the protection of Jesus Christ over Renee right now. We pray that, that her path would be set straight according to God's magnificent plan for Renee. We pray now in the name of Jesus Christ, the name above all names, the name that Uh, declares truth and also declares that which is good for Renee that you dear Lord would now 
make this a season for our sister Renee that is the greatest season of her life that this will be a path now that will lead on to greater and greater things in your kingdom so that her purpose would be fulfilled, her healing would be complete, her direction would be clear, and that you would pave the way for her ministry to expand and to influence those in all places, both dark and in light, according to your purpose and your plan, Jesus Christ. We pray in your name. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Well, Renee, uh, anything you would like to share before I turn now this over to you to pray for our audience? Oh, uh, I can't think of anything really. <laughs> okay. Um, well, fair enough, because this is a good point <laughs> in which uh, now I have the uh, the honor to turn this over to you to pray for our audience, please. All right, yes. Uh, Heavenly Father, I just want to pray first for the lost, um, that you would meet them kindly, as I know that you do. Um, there's so many people seeking that are desperate, that are just confused about what their identity is. And their identity is children of God. That is who they are. So I pray that they find that and learn to love you and trust you as you're calling them to do, Lord. And I pray for protection over them, over those that are in the dark places, over their families, over the the Christians that are praying for them. <laughs> uh, I know there's a lot of Christians connected to people in the occult that are crying out to you, Lord, to please save them. Yeah. And I believe that you will honor that, Lord. Um, and I pray that your glory falls on your believers, Lord, your followers. Yeah. Help us to serve you in the ways that are best for us, for your glory, God. And I, I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you. Beautiful prayer, my sister, and thank you so much. And if you, um, if you are struggling, on the contact page of mm -hmm. randyk.org, we have three 800 numbers you can call. There's a live person that you can reach on any one of those three channels, 800 numbers. We have a shared partnership with other ministries. So please, if you're thinking that you've lost all hope and that you need to talk with somebody live, you can do that there. Also, let us know on the randyk.org uh, contact page if, uh, if you need help or assistance. We want to um, reach out to you if at all possible. And if you're questioning, am I going to heaven? Or am I going to hell? Here's how you can be sure. And that is, join us in prayer right now as we pray together with you. Say something in your heart, just your heart of hearts, not just in a superficial way, but really praying earnestly. Dear Lord, I know that you went to the cross willingly to save me, to sacrifice yourself, to shed your blood, knowing that you were doing it for me. And Lord, I have failed. I have, I have, I have offended you and others. And I ask for your forgiveness. You, only you can forgive me, dear Lord, because only you are the Lord God. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that now you would take over my life that you, through your Holy Spirit, would live within me as I ask for forgiveness and ask that you would become Lord of my life, my Savior and my Lord, and guide my ways, all the ways of my life going forward, so that on that day that I leave this world, 
I will see you face to face as my Lord, my God, forever and ever. If you prayed that prayer, please let us know at Randy Kate Ottoworth. We want to uh, follow up with you. And we congratulate you because there's a celebration going on in heaven. You put a smile yes. on God's face. Isn't that right, Renee? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's... And, yes, and he's washed you new. You're new. That's something I think that's so amazing about your story, Renee, is that <laughs> you thought you were expecting judgment and he showed you grace. <laughs> yep. He's just said, no, you're mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brand new. Yep. And once you're his, he's not going to let you go. He's yep. your, you're his. <laughs> but there is a struggle in this world, isn't there, Renee? There mm -hmm. is a constant, we're not, yes. this is not home. And yep. uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and spirits of darkness. <laughs> That's what God's word says. So continually understand the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Understand the power of repentance. Repentance is very clear. We, yes. we wash, bathe every once in a while, right? We, <laughs> <laughs> we, we have to stay clean. And so the, the repentance just says, uh, and you brought this out in, in your uh, testimony, Renee, that when we call out the name of Jesus Christ, when we ask for forgiveness, those demons, those powers, principalities, those spirits of darkness cannot get to us. They can't attack us, can right. they? Right. Yeah. yeah. We're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. So, mm. but it has to be earnest, you know, from the heart. So yes. if it's not earnest, then ask the Lord to give you a heart of repentance. That's right. Give to give you a heart of yeah. repentance. Just, Lord, uh, as the Lord's prayer that Jesus gave, Lord, deliver me from evil and temptation, Lord, in Jesus' name, and bring me to a heart after you, after your heart, that I might have an earnest desire to repent. And then ask him, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal those things in your life that you need to um, be clean from. Uh, and then also understand when Lot's wife was leaving Sodom and Gomorrah, when they were leaving Sodom and Gomorrah, which is kind of a, not probably not too far from our world in, in many respects, that they couldn't look back. Just look forward. Don't yep. look back. Don't let the enemy, you know, force you. Oh, you were a bad person. You did this. You're, not, you're unredeemable. No, that's a lie. Mm -hmm. It's a lie, isn't it, Renee? Yes, you yes. tried that with me. Yes, that is yes. a lie. <laughs> yeah, so look for it. Look to the look toward Jesus. You know, once you've ex once you've received Him, there's no turning back. Don't look back and say, "Oh, you know, but maybe not this. Maybe I've gone too far." No, you've mm -hmm. never gone too far to uh, beyond the reach of Jesus Christ. Never, never, ever, ever, ever. Uh, but on that day that you leave this world, make sure. Uh, that you are have a heart towards God because He's He's redeemed you, He's sealed you, uh, and you have nothing to fear, nothing to fear. So that if you prayed that prayer, if you have Him in your heart, you know Him as your Lord and Savior. I have some great news for you. <laughs> Heaven is in your future. Take care, and God bless. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. And if you'd like further information, go to our website at randyk.org, where our mission is simple, to share the great news of God's love.